Today is going to be a really simple one, but something that I think everyone with a gradient logo has to try. It's a purely procedural shader node based effect. So without any further ado, let's figure out how we can create this particular logo reveal. In our default scene, we're going to require the import images as planes add-on. So let's go to our edit preferences, switch to the add-ons tab and search for images as planes. Once you have this checked, you can go ahead and close this out and tap X to delete the default cube. And to bring in our logo, we'll press shift A and search for image and underneath this, we can find the images as planes. Now select whatever logo you have and it's best if you use one that has transparency by itself. So here I've imported an image with no background but to actually see the image you have to switch your viewport shading to render and now you can see it's the older Mozilla Firefox logo. This already has transparency because these edges are completely transparent. To see the actual node setup that was created for this bring your cursor to the junction of these two windows click and drag to create a new window and switch this from the 3D viewport to the shader editor. Now you can see that you have the actual image texture node plugged into both the base color as well as the alpha socket of your principled PSDF. Now what we're going to do is actually use this color value in the alpha along with the original alpha that's already present. For that we press shift A and search for a math node and we switch it from add to multiply so that we can have both the sockets present together. Let's plug this in and that way the alpha is currently being multiplied by a value of 0.5 but we need to multiply it with some value from the color node. So let's press shift A and search for a color ramp node and then simply plug this color value into the factor of the color ramp and switch the color ramp from linear to constant and then bring this white slider into about 50% and plug this color into the second value. Now one method of animating it is actually keyframing the position of this slider and you can see how we get the logo to slowly come in but that way you have to bring it really close to the edge and I don't really like that because you don't get perfect control over areas such as this over here because even at a position of zero, we don't have the shadow. But if we bring it too close, it just switches over and everything else disappears. So that's why I don't like doing that. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to search for a brightness contrast node and plug that in before the color ramp. Now you can just increase the contrast a bit to make the lines nice and sharp. And then by playing around with the brightness value, you can actually get this to come in like a really nice flow. So for the animation, you can always set your frame rate in the output properties to whatever you want. And then on frame one, just make sure that the brightness is just low enough to make everything disappear. So I think a value of this makes everything disappear. So I'll hover over the brightness and tap I. Then let's say I want this to appear completely in just three seconds. So on frame 90, I'll change the brightness all the way till everything is present, which seems to happen around this value. So I'll just hover over it and tap I. And now if you play the animation, you should see it slowly appear. And if this speed is something that you're happy with, you can leave it like that. Or you can come down here and press T and change this from Bezier to linear to have it come in at a smooth rate throughout. But it's really up to you. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep it at Bezier and switch this over to the graph editor and here I'm going to switch this pivot point over here from the bounding box center to the individual centers and then I'll just press S to scale it up to maybe 2.5 times the value and now it should start off much slower and then speed up much more in the center and come back out. Now of course it's up to you as to how you want to play around with this but that's actually all there is for the animation of the logo intro. But let's suppose you had a logo that did not have transparency. Let's just show you how to do that as well. I'll just move this one to the side and then I'll press shift A and search for another logo. So here we've imported another logo but this one even though the alpha is connected to the alpha socket there's no transparency because it's a white background logo. For this sort of a situation we don't need to use the alpha socket and because the background is contrasting fairly well with the logo we can simply use the color and plug that into a color ramp node and have the same setup as before. So the color goes into the factor and this color is what we'll use as the alpha value. Now we're going to have to switch this from linear to constant and you can have the animation go however you please but because the background is lighter than the actual logo I'm gonna have to flip the color ramp so I have to bring the black to the right hand side and have the white on the left hand side so once you're done with that you could animate this going all the way from this corner and slowly coming in and you could stop it just before the rest of the white comes in but just like before I'm gonna leave this midway through and then I'll press shift a and search for a brightness contrast node now just like before I'm going to increase the contrast to something slightly higher and then I'll animate the brightness value. So in this case, you have to be very precise to make sure that you're getting as much of the background out as you can without actually disturbing the logo. So you can keep bringing this down till you see at this point, even the image starts disappearing. So this is approximately the best that we can get from this. So that's what you could do for images that have backgrounds. Now let's say the image has a darker background. In that case, let's press shift A and search for an image like that. So for example, this particular image, it clearly has a darker background compared to the logo. So for that, 
Just like last time, remove the alpha, press shift A and search for a color ramp node, plug the color into the factor and this color into the alpha socket of the principled PSDF. Then to control the effect, press shift A and search for a brightness contrast node, plug that in, change the color ramp from linear to constant and then bring the white in and then increase the contrast a bit and just play around with the brightness value to make it come in just like that. Now, even over here, because the background is dark and these shadow areas are also very dark, you will have to compromise at some point or the other because if you start bringing in all of the shadows, the background will start appearing. So really there's a max limit up to which you can use this if you have backgrounds present, but it works pretty well if your background is pitch black or pitch white. Anything else? will have slight issues like this. But many of the times they won't be noticeable if you just have the logo appear and then transition into the final logo or whatever it is. So again, balance and play around to get the effect that you want. To actually set up the scene and make the animation look a bit better, we can go ahead and just set up the scene. So let's bring this back to the center by pressing Alt G, which will clear its location. And then I'll press GZ to just bring it up on the Z axis by a bit. And then I'll press Shift A and search for a mesh plane and I'll scale the plane up till it's fairly large. Now now in my render properties, I'll switch on screen space reflections and bloom. And for the actual image, I'll go to the material properties. And instead of plugging the color into just the base color, I'll plug it into the emission socket so that it's going to start emitting that color. I can remove it from the base color and then I can hide the light. With that, I also have to make sure that I change the base color down to black so that we get the image. Now I can increase the strength a bit to get some nice bloom. And if I switch off overlays, this is what we have, which looks pretty cool. Now to get nice reflections on the floor, I'll press this plus button to create a new material with the floor selected and I'll just increase the metallic value all the way to one and I'll reduce the roughness value all the way to zero. But even with screen space reflections switched on, you won't be able to see reflections because by default, the material on the Firefox logo or whatever image you import is going to have the blend mode set to blend. But screen space reflections doesn't use blend too well. So you'll have to go to the material properties, go down to the settings and change the blend mode from alpha blend to alpha hashed. And instantly you'll get the reflections on the bottom plane as well. And then if you play the animation, animation, this is what it currently looks like. Now, because we're using this logo in a 3D environment, this shadow doesn't look nice. So to fix that, wherever you have the final keyframe of this brightness and contrast, instead of giving it a value this high, you can start reducing the value till just that shadow disappears. So I think that looks fine. And I'll just tap I and that looks a lot better. Next, we'll go to our world properties, change the background all the way to black. And I'll just set up my camera by selecting the camera here, pressing Alt G to clear location, Alt R to clear rotation, followed by RX 90 to rotate it on the X axis axis by 90 degrees. Then if I switch on overlays, I can see that it's pointed in the wrong direction. So I'll press RZ 90 to rotate it on the Z axis by 90 degrees. Then I'll press GX and just move it back and then GZ to move it up on the Z axis. Then I'll press zero on my numpad to go into my camera view and I'll just press GX to move it back so that a bit more of the reflection is seen. Then I can place it exactly how I want. And I think for this material, instead of having a roughness value of zero, I'll increase the roughness to 0 0.1. And although you could do many more things, since I want to keep this fairly simple, we'll leave it as is. And if you're happy with it, you can go ahead and just render animation. I hope this was a quick and fun one because I personally think it's a must try if you have logos with different gradients. This does work with solid colors as well, as long as there are multiple different colors, but it won't work if you have the same brightness of every single one of the colors that are present, or even if you just have one solid color to create the logo. If you liked this one, there are hundreds of videos present on my channel, and I'm sure you'll like many of them. And you can start off by watching watching this entire intro animation playlist. Until the next video comes out tomorrow, thank you so much for watching, keep creating, and don't forget to stay creative.